Welcome to New Product Friday. This is Jasper. I'm Frank, and we've got some nice knives to show you. Knives, knives. So we start with this nice Spyderco Subvert Sprint Run, designed by Nati Amor. He's an Israeli goldsmith and knife maker. We already know the bright orange G10 version of the Subvert. It's in a regular Spyderco catalog, but now they made a nice sprint run for us. A nice a CPM 20 CV. Nice carbon and fiber handles. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very big. It's a large knife. Yeah, it's a really large knife, but yeah. it's too large for my uh, pockets, for my skinny European pockets. It's more of a backpack knife, maybe. Yeah, or just for your collection, because it's a sprint run, so yeah. I don't think everyone buying it will use it. There will, of course, be people who will be using it. And what's really cool is that it's got the really oversized, thick titanium liners in the handle. In fact, they're like nearly as thick as the blade. And then on top of that, you'll have the nice carbon fiber. The carbon fiber has a nice texture that you can probably hear. Um, you can probably hear it better than you can see it on the camera. But it gives a really nice hand feel. Yeah, and it's a very nice pattern. Unlike your mo more uh, standard carbon fiber. Yeah. It looks like it's a real uh, fine woven carbon fiber, really high quality. And it's made in uh, the Taichung factory of Spyderco and they make probably the best Spyderco knives out there, arguably. These are made in limited quantities. Um, so if you really want one, then be quick, because if they sell out, we might not be able to get more stock. Cool, what's next? Another US brand, I think. Let's go to the Benchmade. The Benchmade. The Grizzly Creek the nice wooden handles. Yeah, it's a really nice wooden handle, nice um, accentuating orange pivot color that matches with the orange backspacer of the knife. And what's special about this one is that it's got a gut hook integrated into the handle. So if you're a hunter and you go up into the mountains or whatever, you don't want to carry too much weight in your backpack, then you've got two tools in one. What's smart is that this knife doesn't have a lock on the gut hook, but it did integrate some jimping over here. So it's very natural to put your hand behind it so that the hook won't close on you. Yeah, so you're safe while yeah. using it. Yeah. Yeah, and these orange details are, re are very nice uh, over yeah. here and also on the back. Yeah, it's pretty characteristic for the Benchmade Hunt series. Yeah, any uh, special steel? I think it's stone washed. It's a stone washed uh, blade and the steel is uh, S30V, so that's very proven. Uh, it's relatively easy to sharpen in the field if this would have been like S90V or whatever. And it's got to be a bit more tricky in the field to sharpen it. So this is very much made with hunters in mind. And if you look at the hunters in mind thing, then you also see uh, a double jimping on the back of the blade. So you see it's got jumping over here on top of the thumb stud where you would normally place your thumb, but it also has jimping over here. And that's where you would place your index finger if you use it to uh, butcher animals, which you do if you hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're a good shot, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what should we do next? These, the CRKTs. Let's start with the CRKT CEO. Yeah. Um, I think the normal CEO is one of our best selling knives. Many people like that knife. Nice small form factor. Uh, it almost disappears in your pocket. Okay. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah, yeah. and this is a, an even smaller version and it's pretty affordable as well. It's got the Jiran handles. What I like about this knife is that they chose a 4116 German stainless steel. And that's a, a steel type that they normally use in German kitchen knives as well, I believe, like the X50 uh, series. And I'm really glad that they did that instead of the 9CR or 8CR steel that CRKT likes to use as well. What I also really like is the deep carry pocket clip over here. So you can carry it in inside your pocket very discreetly. And you can also very easily turn it around for a left-handed carry. So that's the CRKT CEO compact flipper. Yeah. G Ren handle. And it has a flipper and a, and a liner lock, but what I noticed just now, and that the liner lock doesn't have any jimping and it's pretty deep, so it can yeah. be a bit hard to, yeah. to close. Um, but it's very fun to play with nonetheless. Yeah, if you have really callous hands, then it will be really tough to open this one or close this one. And then this is the Kobe. Um, a Jeff Parks design, you will recognize the lines in this knife from the uh, CRKT bones and the jump bones, the larger brother. But this has got a really nice bright blue handle. And it's also a very, very lightweight knife. You hardly feel this if you have this in your pocket. Yeah, they're very comparable in weight, even though this is quite a bit larger yeah. uh, in size. Yeah, it's got aluminum handles and an inset liner lock. So the construction is very lightweight as well. And I really like the very simple pocket clip on this one. Yeah, it's not as deep though as the other one. No, no. So you would Far see uh, a bit of the blade uh, sticking out of your pocket. Of the handle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. Cool, so that was the uh, CRKT Kobe. Uh, let's have a look at AMV. Yeah. There's a very big knife over here. 
It's a very big and very special knife. So this is the ANV M500, but then it's the special um, 1942 uh, limited edition. And a bit of a background behind this, this is designed to be a, kind of a modern interpretation of the uh, Fairbairn Sykes dagger that we used to use as a commando dagger in the Second World War. And the link with Ecton of Herbe is that they are from the Czech Republic. And uh, in the Second World War, they had uh, two guys, uh, Jan Kubis and Joseph Kapcik, who went to the UK to um, receive some training with the OSS. And then they went over to Prague to um, commit the assassination of uh, Reinhard Heydrich in 1942. Joseph Kapcik, one of the two um, assassinators, um, they recently discovered a pistol of his. So they engraved the drawing of the Colt 1903 with his, uh, with the same serial number that his pistol carried. And that's the special edition um, of the M500. And like the uh, original M500, it's got the uh, Elmac steel, uh, cryo treated, um, made in the Czech Republic. And it's just a really, really cool knife. So on one side, it's a regular engraving of the pistol and on the other side you see the x-ray yeah and i think this is a glass breaker right yeah yeah let's call it a glass breaker yeah <laughs> not, it's not definitely not meant for skulls no, no definitely <laughs> not a skull crusher moving on to uh, another big knife or many uh kitchen side what do we have it's the shizu hamono gifu collection these are some really nice japanese style uh, and Japanese made kitchen knives. They do not have a traditional uh, wa or D grip handle. They have like a very geometric angular design in the handle. So the blade of these knives is made of VG10 core Damascus. So the core is made out of VG10 steel, which is a very well-known Japanese knife steel. It's uh, pretty stainless. It's really easy to sharpen. And when you sharpen it yourself, it's really easy to get it like razor sharp. Yeah. That's what I noticed at home. And I don't always um, like Damascus uh, in, on knives in general, mm -hmm. but I think it, it's a lot more interesting than many other Damascus uh, patterns that I've seen. And it's a pretty wild pattern, but yeah. it's also uh, the etching that's been done really subtle. As a knife maker, you can choose to have a really strong etching with a really high contrast, a lot of black, a lot of silver, uh, or you do it a bit more subtly. And that's what they did over here. And I really like that, it's really classy. Now we have got more kitchen stuff, so let's get this out of the way. Now we go back to Solingen, Germany, where we have some nice Robert Heder cutlery and the Robert Heder buckles knife. Let's start off with the cutlery. This is your average steak knife set uh, in plum wood, I believe. Um, the fork is made of 1810 stainless steel, so it will not rust at all. Um, and the steak knife is made out of a stainless steel and it's got a really fine micro serration. So it will go through meat even though you use it on a plate or whatever, which tells the knife of course, but the micro serration will make sure that it will keep sharp for a long time. So that's a really nice classy um, and classic even uh, steak set for mm -hmm. you if you really like your barbecue this summer. The other one has got a really interesting story. So this is a Robert Heder Buckles knife and the handle on this one is made from uh, anti-roba wood. And that's a wood kind that they dove up from the bottom of the Panama Canal, or at least the water surrounding the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. And the story is that in 1914, they, dig, they dug the uh, Panama Canal and they submerged a part of a rainforest. I think a couple of years ago, like a hundred years later, they went down with some special underwater sauce and they harvested that wood after being below the water for a hundred years. Uh, so this wood is now already very much aged and very resistant to anything you can think. So by it being submerged in water, it, it's, get, uh, it's getting more stable over time by being in the water. It's That's what they claim, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty interesting. But in Europe, we're more used to bog oak and it generally comes from Eastern Europe somewhere, I think. Um, but that's a really nice, cool knife, cool story, stainless, um, so it will not rust on you. Um, so it's a really nice, classy set. It surprised me how light it is for a hardwood. Yeah. yeah. And to wrap this new product Friday up, we've got some nice giant mouse knives. Um, we'll start off with the Nimbus. This is the fifth anniversary year of the giant mouse Nimbus. Um, and they re-engineered the uh, washers, the phosphor bronze washers that go into the knife. And it's been brought out in Magna Cut, so CPM Magna Cut. So that's pretty awesome to see that on a giant mouse knife. I like the original Nimbus already. Um, and this has just been upgraded, better materials, better washers. So if you like the original Nimbus, you're gonna like this one even more. Every time I uh, 
do record one of these videos. Yeah. I'm usually behind the camera. I always hear a lot of praise from MagnaCut. Mm -hmm. Is this the best steel that we sell? Or uh, is that debatable? Well, that depends on what you're gonna do with your steel. And the thing is that every steel has got a bit of a trade-off. So it's either very stain resistant or it's got great air edge retention or it's very tough. But you can't choose all three. But it turns out that MagnaCut is somewhat of a unicorn doing most of those really well. Um, so that's why you see a lot of major production companies switching over to MagnaCut right now. Because it's uh, practically the same price as some other CPM steels, but then better. So that's why people choose and like MagnaCut very much. Yeah, awesome. I would have preferred if it was a bit more of a flipper. It's a bit stiff. Maybe it will run in once you use it yeah. more. Yeah, it's, it's um, got to wear in. Yeah. I have played with this one a little bit already, yeah. and this one really, I mean, yeah. you can play with it all day. Yeah. Uh, do it one-handed. Ah, yes. Yeah, I think this one runs on ball bearings and that one runs on washers, so that's the difference. So this is the Giant Mouse uh, Ace Jutland, Jutland, <laughs> uh, in Burlap Magarda. Um, and this is a pretty nice uh, tactical knife. And what I really like is that this got Vanadis steel, uh, which is now for extreme edge retention. And it's got a really high flat grind, so it's gonna be a really nice slicer. Um, I think this is even pretty cool as a kitchen knife, even. Really? <laughs> outdoor yeah. cooking, maybe? Uh, outdoor or, cooking, Or would yeah, you use picnics. it indoors? Yeah, I use my pocket knives in the kitchen. Don't, oh, don't, don't blame me. You're such a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Proud to be a nerd. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the flipper on this one. It's got a liner lock, and it's got a um, brass uh, backspacer in the back of the handle. So it's pretty hefty at the back of the handle. It will drop back a bit but it does give you a really confident feel in hand. So I really like that about this knife. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a knife you can uh, really play with, but also uh, it's very nice to actively use and abuse. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, that was it for this week. But we have one special announcement. On the 2nd of September, we have our really awesome Have a Knives Day Festival at our office in Apeldoorn, in the Netherlands. The tickets are on sale on our website right now, so check out our website. You can probably find it on the new products page. The day will be filled with cool knives, workshops, uh, great food, mm. uh, really cool deals. We've got a lot of countdown deals for you. But also there's very good deals on just general knives. Uh, there's gonna yeah, be yeah. workshops, influencers, brands. Um, it's gonna be a big day. We've done it before, but this yeah. one is really gonna be like an, an XL version. XL version, yeah. We've got two sessions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, depending on which, whatever you like. If you have to come for four, you might go for the afternoon. And you can actually try out a lot of the products that we carry as well. We've got a whole sharpening station there. You can try more or less any sharpening method you like. Hold any knife you like, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, make sure to check out the tickets on our website. Um, we've got a limited amount of spaces available. So make sure that you get your tickets if you want to come. 2nd of September, Apeldoorn in the Netherlands. Have a nice day, nice tools, and we'll see you there. Be there. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.